Ambassador, thank you very much. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Your Excellency, distinguished uh, guests. Uh, first of all, let me uh, express my deepest uh, sorry for my English. Uh, my Spanish is uh, is not that good, let's say. So I decided I'll, I'll make the speech in uh, in English. And uh, as far as I know, there will be a translation uh, provided uh, to all of you. Well, allow me first of all to express my deepest gratitude uh, to Argentinian Council of <coughs> International Relations, uh, especially His Excellency Ambassador uh, Adalberto Rodriguez Giavarini, President of uh, the Executive Committee, and particularly Ambassador, our dear friend Hernan Martinez Curra, uh, as well as uh, all the staff members uh, involved for organizing this important event and providing an opportunity to present my country. Uh, when we first met with Ambassador uh, Massimi Escura, uh, I was asking uh, what will be the theme and what I'm going to talk uh, with the audience. Uh, and uh, he sent me kind of a list of questions uh, in a very broad form, you know, and uh, there were so many uh, details that I was uh, last days I was working on, on that uh, list and I was trying somehow to decrease not to bore uh, my dear audience here but uh, well I tried my best and I hope uh, you'll enjoy it and uh, I'll be ready to answer any questions if uh, after this presentation will uh, uh, arise. Well, in a couple of words, just uh, at a glance to, to give you a picture about uh, today's Armenia, general information. Today's Republic of Armenia lies in a triangular uh, section of the South Caucasus, bordered uh, by Azerbaijan in the east, Iran in the south, Turkey in the west, and uh, Georgia in the north. It is a landlocked country with an area of uh, 29,800 square kilometers, which is just about uh, the size of Belgium or Vancouver Island, to give you an uh, impression on that. Official language of Armenia is Armenian. Armenian is considered one of the oldest languages uh, in the world and uh, presents uh, a separate branch of uh, Indo-European language uh, family with its own alphabet invented in 405, 405 uh, by a prominent scholar Mesrop Mashtod. I will uh, a bit later talk a bit about uh, the alphabet itself. The population is 3.1 million uh, with ethnic breakdown of 97% uh, Armenians and other mi minorities like Russians, Yazidis, Kurds, Ukrainians, uh, Jews, and Greeks. It is one of the most homogeneous countries in the world. Capital city is Yerevan with 1.2 million inhabitants and Yerevan is 2,795 years old. One of the oldest cities in the world. It is 29 years older, older than Rome. <coughs> and, uh, the history of Armenia is a fusion of struggles, hardships, tragic losses, glorious victories, uh, majestic ups and deep falls with a spirit so strong that it passes uh, culture and heritage from one generation to another. Armenia is acknowledged as uh, one of the cradles of uh, civilization with its people known worldwide for their talent, hospitality, <coughs> generosity, honesty, a uh, sense of humor and undoubtedly the powerful will of survival. The present day Republic of Armenia occupies a fraction of the ancient Armenia, forming an important <coughs> form of vintage and highway of great value for trade and commerce between Asia and Europe. It was destined to be at grips with adversity. For a succession of centuries, the Armenians were in constant warfare with invaders and conquerors, like Assyrians, Romans, Byzantines, Parthians, Arabs, and Turks. Throughout their turbulent centuries, the Armenians successfully asserted their historical identity, 
and upheld their national heritage against great odds. And the main reason for this are the three most important pillars that kept the Armenian national uh, identity, Armenian identity, so strong: language, religion, and culture. Christianity and the Armenian Church have held a central and vital position with respect to all aspects of Armenian life. Christianity in Armenia can be traced back to the age of the Apostles. Two of Christ's Apostles, Thaddeus and Bartholomew, were the first evangelists of Armenia preaching the Gospel there as early as the second half of the first century. Founded in the first century, Armenian Apostolic Church is one of the five ancient Eastern Oriental Orthodox Churches. In 301, the beginning of fourth century, 301, Armenia became the first nation in the world to adopt Christianity as a state religion. The Christianization of Armenia determined the entire future course of Armenian history. Christianity gave powerful boost to the flourishing of the new Armenian culture. There are four hierarchical sees in the Armenian Church. The Catholicate of all Armenians in Echmeadzin, which is also referred as Mother See of Holy Echmeadzin, some 25 kilometers only from, from the capital city, Yerevan. Uh, the Catholicate of Great House of Cilicia, established in Lebanon in 1930, but its roots go back to the 13th century. The Patriarchate of Jerusalem, established in the early 14th century, and the Patriarchate of Constantinople, established in 1461. The creation of Armenian alphabet, I referred above, played an enormous role in preserving the national cultural identity of the Armenian people, and enjoys very special love and respect. Uh, the alphabet consisted of 36 letters. It was so perfect that it did not undergo any changes or reforms from the beginning of the 5th century. Just later on, only three letters were added in order to make easier the translations from uh, foreign languages. The same year alphabet was created the Bible was translated into Armenian and rewritten anew. From ancient times, Armenians have cherished their artistic traditions which reflect a unique culture and landscape. The talent and skills of Armenians, Armenian masters, kept all the world traditions alive by integrating them into modern way of life so that the two complement and enrich each other. Armenian manuscripts, being a precious source of information and pieces of miniature art, have always attracted the attention of researchers and scientists around the world. Today, all the manuscripts that have been found are stored in the manuscript depository called Matenadaran, Institute of Ancient Manuscripts in the capital of Yerevan. Over 17,000 manuscripts in Armenian, Arabic, Persian, Indian, Russian, Latin, Greek, etc. are kept from all medieval cultures and sciences, including history, grammar, law, philosophy, medicine, cosmography, literature, alchemy, astrophysics, religion, mathematics, etc. The oldest works date back to the 5th and 6th centuries. Armenian arts have been profoundly influenced by Armenian culture, Armenia's long history, ever-changing geography, and unique mountainous landscape. One of the most important periods of Armenian art was that from the 9th to 6th centuries before Christ. Citadels, temples, irrigation, canals, carved stone seals, glass, ceramics, jewelry, and arms were characteristic of the Armenian Urartu kingdom's artistic endeavors. The Urartians were major producers of bronze objects and meanwhile very skilled in the use of silver and gold. After adoption of Christianity, iconography came to play a very important role in Armenian art and architecture 
while the invention of the alphabet gave life to the art of illuminated manuscript. Armenian architecture, a particularly rich part of the Armenian heritage, is widely recognized as a unique contribution to the international architecture. It is believed that stones in Armenia are silent witnesses of its ancient history. According to experts, Armenian rock paintings date back from 8th to 6th centuries before Christ. There are more than, please pay attention, 33,000 monuments listed in the Armenian heritage, three of which are present in UNESCO's World Heritage List. Most of the monuments are religions, emphasizing the importance of Armenia being the pioneer of adapting Christianity as a state religion. Few are the people who, like the Armenians, can boast a continuous and consistent record of fine textile production from the first millennium before Christ to the present. Armenians today are blessed by diversity and richness of textile heritage, passed on by 30 centuries of diligent practice. Music is a vivid part of Armenian culture. Armenian music can never be confused with any other. It has particular, you can even call a special melody, a rich sound. According to Plutarch, the famous <coughs> Greek historian, the first historically known theater in Armenia was built in 69, in the year of 69 before Christ, 14 years before Pompey's first public theater in Rome. The dance folklore has occupied a leading role through the history of the Armenian people. Having survived through the various historical challenges, Armenians managed to sustain their ethnic dance art. It reflects their infinite spiritual world, love of freedom, courage and heroism, tenderness and lyricism, vigor and strength. The Armenian plateau and the Caucasus had always been at the crossroads of civilization, both geographically and culturally. From ancient times, people have crossed this region, which served as part of a Silk Road, to get from east to west, or vice versa. As far back as Roman Empire, Armenia was of geopolitical interest to the Assyrians, Parthians, and Romans. After Christianity spread through much of the West, Armenia came to be seen as an ally to the West, and thus Arabs and Persians began invading the country, forcing it to become a buffer zone between East and the West. Arabs took control of Armenia in the 7th century, and only in the 9th century, Armenians were able to break free of Arab rule. It marked the beginning of the second golden age of Armenia, a time when peace brought prosperity to the land and its people. Then in the 11th century it was shattered by the arrival of Seljuk Turks who were preceded by other Turkic tribes from the east. The Seljuk Turks fought against the Persians using Armenia as their battlefield and wreaking havoc on the country. The last Armenian kingdom was forced to shores of the Mediterranean Sea to Cilicia, where it survived until 14th century. With the onset of the Mongols in the 13th century, successive waves of invasions continued to devastate the country. After Constantinople fell to the Ottomans, Armenia too was overtaken in the early 16th century. The Persians persisted to lay claims on Armenian soil. The Ottomans and Persians settled their differences by dividing Armenia among their two empires. However, with the Russian Empire rising power, the Persian Empire's stake in the region diminished in the 19th century when Eastern Armenia was ceded, was ceded to Russia. Uh, in the later years of 19th century, the famously known Sultan Abdul Hamid II sat at the head of disintegrating Ottoman Empire. In 1820, Greece was able to break free of the Turkish yoke that has enslaved it for over 300 years. 
but Abdul Hamid's empire still encompassed a vast amount of territory from Eastern Europe through the Near East into the Middle East and the Armenian Plateau. Ethnic groups in the Ottoman Empire were pressing for reforms that would give them equal rights or freedom from Ottoman rule altogether. Abdul Hamid decided that the wise course of action would be to make an example out of an ethnic group to keep the others in line. For this purpose, he chose the Armenians, long considered the loyal, loyal millet, loyal citizen, or loyal millet in the empire. Thus, in 1896, the Sultan ordered massacres which took the lives of over 300,000 Armenians. This decree was to be just the beginning of the darkest page of Armenian history. After the turn of the century, Ottoman Turkey's territorial boundaries continued to shrink despite the Sultan's previous warning to ethnic groups. Fearing the total collapse of their empire, a group of Turks who were educated in Europe, planned and executed a coup against the Sultan and installed themselves at the helm of the empire. Though the new government had promised reforms that would give ethnic minorities, such as Armenians, greater rights, the Young Turk, as they called themselves, regime failed to follow through and in fact began to espouse an empire that joined all Turkic lands. When World War I erupted, <clears throat> the Young Turks government, hoping to save the remains of the reckoned uh, Ottoman Empire, weakened the reckoned Ottoman Empire, adopted the policy of pan-Turkism, the establishment of a mega Turkish empire comprising of all Turkic-speaking peoples of the Caucasus and the Central Asia, extending to China, intending also to Turkify all ethnic minorities of the empire. The Armenian population became the main obstacle standing in the way of the realization of this policy. Although the decision for the deportation of all Armenians from the Western Armenia was adopted, in late 1911, the Young Turks used World War I as a suitable opportunity for its implementation. On April 24, 1915, the first phase of the Armenian massacres began with the arrest and murder of nearly 800 intellectuals, mainly from Constantinople, the capital of Ottoman Empire, today's uh, now Istanbul in present Turkestan. Subsequently, Armenians worldwide commemorate the April 24th as a day that memorialize, memorializes all the victims of the Armenian Genocide. The second phase of the final solution appeared with the conscription of some 60,000 men into the General Turkish Army, who were later disarmed and killed by their Turkish fellow men. The third phase of the genocide comprised of massacres, deportations, and death marches made up of women, children, and the elderly into the Syrian deserts. During those marches, hundreds of thousands were killed by Turkish soldiers, gendarmes, of, uh, and Kurdish or Circassian mobs. Others died because of famine, epidemic diseases, and exposure to the elements. Thousands of women and children were raped. Tens of thousands were forcibly converted to Islam. Finally, the last phase of Armenian genocide appeared with the total and utter denial by Turkish government of the mass killings and elimination of the Armenian nation on its homeland. Despite the ongoing international recognition of the Armenian genocide, Turkey has consistently fought the acceptance of the Armenian Genocide by enemies, including falsification of history, historical, uh, historical facts, propaganda, campaigns, lobbying, etc. By 1923, an estimated 1.5 million of nearly 2 million Armenians living in Ottoman Empire had been murdered or died during the direct actions of the Turks. 
Most of the remaining Armenian population of Ottoman Turkey managed to flee to neighboring countries, some moving later to Europe or the Americas and established diaspora communities. The term genocide was coined by Polish Jewish lawyer Raphael Lemkin in 1944, whose family was one of the victims of the Jewish Holocaust. By defining this term, Professor Lemkin sought to describe Nazi politics of systematic murder, violence and cruelty, and atrocities committed against the Armenians in the Ottoman Empire in 1915 as well. The defeat of Ottoman Turks in World War I and the disintegration of the Russian Empire gave the Armenians a chance to declare their independence. On May 28, 1918, the independent Republic of Armenia was established. Overwhelming difficulties confronted the infant republic, but amid these conditions, again the Armenians devoted all their energies to the pressing task of reconstructing their country. But due to pressure exerted simultaneously by Turks and Communists, the Republic collapsed in 1920, just two years of existence. Finally, the Soviet Red Army moved into the territory, now Eastern Armenia, and declared it as a Soviet Republic. The second half of 20th century, Armenia flourished economically and culturally. The tumultuous changes occurring throughout the Soviet Union in mid-80s inevitably had repercussions in Armenia. In 1988, a movement of support began in Armenia for the constitutional struggle of the Armenians of Nagorno-Karabakh to exercise their full lawful right to self-determination. As far as this conflict has a, has a great uh, impact and importance in the region, I would love to draw your attention on some facts that uh, uh, I consider very important for you uh, to know. If we touch a bit to historical data, uh, Karabakh, or as we call it historically Artsakh, is an integral part of historic Armenia, and as such, is mentioned in the works of Strabo, Pliny the Elder, Claudius Ptolemy, Plutarch, Diocasius, and other ancient authors. The evident testimony of it is the remained rich historic cultural heritage. After the division of Greater Armenia, it was in 387, Artsakh, Karabakh, became part of the Eastern Armenian Kingdom which soon fell under the Persian, then Arab rules. Artsakh was part of the Armenian kingdom of Bakratids from 9th to 11th century, and part of Zakarid Armenia, another dynasty and kingdom, from 12th to 13th century. In following centuries, Karabakh fell under the rule of various conquerors, remaining Armenian, and having semi-independent status. Since the mid-18th century, the invasion of Turkic nomadic tribes to the north of Karabakh began, which led to clashes with local Armenians. At the end of Russian-Persian War of 1804 and 1813, Karabakh was annexed to Russia. Coming to pre-Soviet uh, era, the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict began in 1917 during the formation of three ethnic republics in Transcaucasia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia, as a result of the collapse of Russian Empire. The population of Nagorno-Karabakh, 95% of which were Armenians, convened its first congress, which proclaimed Nagorno-Karabakh an independent political unit, elected the national council and government. From 18 to 20, Nagorno-Karabakh had all the trappings of statehood, including the army and the legitimate authority. In response to the peace initiatives of the people of Nagorno-Karabakh, Azerbaijani Democratic Republic launched a military action. From May 1918 to April 1920, Azerbaijan and militants of Turkey, which supported Azerbaijan, used violence and carried out massacres against the Armenian population. 
About 40,000 Armenians were killed and deported only in Shushi. Shushi is the second city after Stepanakert, the capital of uh, today's Nagorno-Karabakh Republic. But it was not possible to make the people of Nagorno-Karabakh obey Azerbaijan's power in this way. In August 1919, in order to prevent military conflict, Karabakh and Azerbaijan signed a preliminary agreement by which they agreed to discuss the problem of the status of the region at Paris Peace Conference. Response to, of the international community is really memorable. The League of Nations rejected the request for Azerbaijan's membership, citing the fact that it is difficult to define clear boundaries and territories under the sovereignty of this state. Among other contentious issues, there was the issue of the status of Nagorno-Karabakh. Because of the Sovietization of the region, the issue fell out of the agenda of international organizations. The Soviet period was also another uh, phase that is memorable and uh, is worth to mention. Establishment of Soviet rule in Transcaucasia was accompanied by the creation of a new political system in Nagorno-Karabakh. Uh, and it has been recognized as a disputed territory between Armenia and Azerbaijan, also by Soviet Russia. According to the agreement signed in August 1920 between Soviet Russia and Armenian Republic, Russian troops were temporarily uh, deployed in Nagorno-Karabakh. Immediately after establishment of the Soviet regime in Armenia, on November 1920, pay attention here, the Azerbaijani Revolutionary Committee, the main Bolshevik instrument of power at that time, made a declaration recognizing territories over which Arme Azerbaijan had claims before. The territories were Nagorno-Karabakh, Zangezur, which is the eastern part of Armenia, today is bordering uh, Nagorno-Karabakh Republic, and Nakhijevan, which is completely empty today uh, and uh, ethnically cleansed from Armenians, as inseparable parts of Armenia. On the basis of the agreement between Azerbaijani Revolutionary Committee and the governments of Soviet Azerbaijan and Soviet Armenia, the National Council of Soviet Azerbaijan proclaimed Nagorno-Karabakh an integral part of Armenian <coughs> Soviet Socialist Republic. Based on the statement of Soviet Azerbaijan, Armenia also declared Nagorno-Karabakh her integral part. The text of, this, the text of this decree, by the way, you can find in the archives and the, uh, the, the then uh, Armenian and Azerbaijani media sources. Thus, a legal confirmation of the unification of Nagorno-Karabakh to Armenia took place. Within the context of international law and norms, it was the last, the last legal act on Nagorno-Karabakh during the communist regime. Ignoring the reality, on July 4th, 1921, in the capital of Georgia, Tbilisi, and the Caucasian Bureau of Communist Party of Russia, convened a plenary session during which the fact that Nagorno-Karabakh is part of Armenian Soviet Socialist Republic was reconfirmed. However, under the dictation of Moscow and Stalin's direct interference, on the night of July, just after 24 hours, on the night of July 5th, the decision of the previous day was reviewed and the forced decision of incorporating Nagorno-Karabakh to Azerbaijan and forming on its territory an autonomous region or so-called oblast was made, not even keeping the procedure. The decision is an unprecedented legal act in the history of international law when the party organ of a third country without any legal basis or authority determines the status of Nagorno-Karabakh. In December 1922, Azerbaijani and Armenian Soviet republics were included in the formation processes of the USSR. And only 
only on one part of the territory of Nagorno-Karabakh on 1923 by decision of the Central Executive Revolutionary Committee of Azerbaijan, the Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Region was formed, by which, in fact, the Karabakh conflict was not resolved but temporarily frozen. Moreover, everything was done so that Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Region had no common border with Armenia. During the entire Soviet period, the Armenians of Nagorno-Karabakh never <coughs> put up with this decision and for decades struggled for reunification with the motherland. During the entire period of being of Nagorno-Karabakh autonomous region within Azerbaijan, the leadership of this republic, Soviet time, had been regularly and consistently <coughs> violating the rights and interests of the Armenian population Discriminatory policies by Azerbaijan against Nagorno-Karabakh was reflected in attempts of artificially suspending the social economic development of the region, turning it into a raw materials appendage, actively intervening in the demographic process aimed at ethnic cleansing, destructing and misappropriating Armenian monuments and cultural values. Discrimination from Azerbaijan towards Nagorno-Karabakh had its impact on population of Karabakh and became the main reason of letters migration. As a result, the correlation of the Karabakh population changed. If in 1923 Armenians amounted to 94.4% of the population of Nagorno-Karabakh, according to 1989 statistics, the number of Armenians had <coughs> reduced to 76.9%. The policy of ethnic cleansing had more success on another Armenian territory in Nakhichevan. As I told you, it's completely empty and no Armenian is living today there. The people of Nagorno-Karabakh and authorities of Armenian Soviet Socialist Republic had sent lots of applications to the Soviet Central Authorities asking about the reconsideration of the wrong decision on incorporating Nagorno-Karabakh to Azerbaijan but were ignored or rejected, causing persecutions against the initiators. What is the current stage of uh, Nagorno-Karabakh conflict? Actually, the current phase or current stage of Nagorno-Karabakh conflict began in 1988, when the response to the self-determination claims of Nagorno-Karabakh population, the Azeri authorities organized massacres and ethnic cleansing of the Armenian population on the entire territory of Azerbaijan, particularly in the cities Sungait, Baku, and Kiribati. On December 10, 1991, Nagorno-Karabakh population declared the establishment of the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic by plebiscite, which fully complies with both international law norms and the letter and spirit of the USSR laws of the time. Thus, on the territory of former Azerbaijani Soviet Socialist Republic, Two equal states were created, Nagorno-Karabakh Republic and the Republic of Azerbaijan. In Nagorno-Karabakh and surrounding areas populated by Armenians, the policy pursued by Azerbaijani authorities turned into overt aggression and large-scale military actions against the Republic of Nagorno-Karabakh, which resulted in tens of thousands killed and caused considerable material damage. Azerbaijan never heeded the international community appeals, particularly the United Nations Security Council resolutions relating to Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, calling to stop military actions and conduct peaceful negotiations. Because of the war, Azerbaijan occupied the, war, the whole region of Shaungyan, part of Nagorno-Karabakh, and the eastern parts of Mardakert and Martuni regions of Nagorno-Karabakh. <coughs> Neighboring districts went under control of Nagorno-Karabakh armed forces, which played the role of security buffer to block the further firing from the Azeri side towards Nagorno-Karabakh settlements. In May 1994, upon request of Azerbaijani side, three parts of the conflict Azerbaijan, no, two parts of the conflict, Azerbaijan, Nagorno-Karabakh, and Armenia as a guarantor, uh, signed a ceasefire with the mediation of uh, Russian Federation, which despite violation 
is still effective. Conflict settlement negotiations are held in the framework of the OSCE Minsk Group with three co-chairs of Russia, United States and France. In the last decade, several options for the settlement proposed by the co-chairs were rejected by Azerbaijan. Currently, negotiations are held on the basis of Madrid proposals, so-called Madrid proposals, represented by co-chairs in November 2007. Despite the negotiations held within the framework of OSCE Minsk Group, which is the only internationally mandated format on conflict settlement and the agreement to carry out negotiations within the Minsk process, Azerbaijan, distorting the nature and main reasons of consequences of the conflict, takes attempts to involve other international organizations in the settlement and initiates parallel processes hindering the negotiation process and having campaign objectives, especially in the United Nations General Assembly and the Council of Europe too. Azerbaijan's aggressive bellicose campaign also puts under question Azerbaijan's desire, statements, assumed obligations and their seriousness aimed at compromise settlement. Azerbaijan continues sending money from oil revenues to increase the military budget and to the acquisition of large number of offensive armaments, grossly violating a number of agreements and obligations in the sphere of security and political military sphere. In fact, Azerbaijan fails all economic, political, military and humanitarian initiatives aimed at strengthening trust between the parties. Particularly, Azerbaijan rejects the offer of the Armenian side on regional cooperation and the offer of the MIS group to pull out snipers from the contact line. What is the position of the Republic of Armenia, official position of the Republic of Armenia uh, to this conflict? Armenia believes that the compromise solution, an improvement of the peace process efficiency, is impossible without full participation of the conflict party Nagorno-Karabakh in the negotiations. Armenia believes that the conflict settlement should be based on the following principles. Nagorno-Karabakh conflict settlement must be based on recognition of the Nagorno-Karabakh people's right to self-determination. Nagorno-Karabakh should have uninterrupted land communication with Armenia under jurisdiction of the Armenian side. And the security of Nagorno-Karabakh should be internationally guaranteed. Armenia attaches importance to the mediation of the OSCE MIS group in the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict settlement process as a viable format for the settlement which has enough potential to find ways of settlement. Armenia seeks a settlement exclusively through peaceful means. Azerbaijan's attempts to get unilateral concessions by the threat of use of force are not only doomed to the failure from the beginning, but also continue to be the main obstacle for the settlement through compromise. Nagorno-Karabakh has no future as a part of Azerbaijan, and whatever is the solution, it must emanate from the will of the Karabakh people. That is the essence of the right of peoples to self-determination. Azerbaijan has neither legal nor political or moral grounds to claim over Nagorno-Karabakh. I'm not. Uh, uh, lots, of, lots of things also to tell, but uh, mostly the uh, economic and political situation today, political parties and uh, political system after uh, regaining of independence from 1991. Uh, so if you have any other uh, approaches or questions, I will uh, be delighted to answer. But uh, there is an interesting quote I, uh, I will do and I will finish. Just uh, concluding this speech, I would love to, uh, you know, it's kind of, uh, Well, it's, it's really interesting. I mean, it's 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 in the full description of my uh, my nation actually, and uh, I hope you you like it. Uh, 
as a, I was I prepared this as a conclusion to my speech. Uh, hopefully, you're not bored, or if you're bored, I'm sorry for that. Uh, <laughs> I tried actually I mean, to, to do my best. Uh, as a conclusion, I would like to, to quote to quote one of the most famous Armenian American writers, William Saroyan. Uh, I want to quote his words. I should like to see any power in this world destroy this race, this small tribe of unimportant people whose wars have been fought and lost, whose structures have crumbled, whose literature is unread, whose music is unheard, and whose prayers are not more answered. Go ahead, destroy this race, destroy Armenia, See if you can do it. Send them from their homes into the desert. Let them have neither bread nor water. Burn their homes and churches. Then see if they will not laugh again. See if they will not sing and pray again. For when two of them meet anywhere in the world, see if they will not create a new army. Thank you very much for your attention.